This is Changemakers with Katie Gore, finding the right solutions for the affordable housing community. This week's Changemaker is Rebecca Hatfield, the president and CEO of Avesta Housing, the largest nonprofit affordable housing provider in Northern New England. Rebecca, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Katie, for having me. So you are an interesting inclusion, and I'm so happy to have you here because you're going to bring a whole new perspective that we have not covered to date on the podcast. So what are some of the main goals that you guys are working on? And tell us a little bit about Avesta. Happy to. So Avesta was, we've been around for just over 50 years. Um, As you mentioned, we're the largest affordable housing provider in Northern New England. We own and operate uh, 110 properties across Maine and New Hampshire, which is about 3,200 units of affordable housing. Um, and we serve close to 5,000 residents every single day. We are a real estate developer. We also have a large property management team. We have a homeowner sh- center and financial capabilities, counseling, and then we also own assisted living facilities. And I stepped in as CEO about a year ago. I've been with Avesta for eight years. I started in the area of acquisitions and asset management and then took over management of the real estate development team and then assumed overseeing the property management team and a year ago stepped into the role of CEO. So what are the things that you like the most about this type of an industry? Because covering homeownership to assisted living to property management, that's a wide spectrum. What are the things you most enjoy about your job? I love that we are providing a basic need for people. I mean, we help fundamentally, we are here to help people. And I am of the belief that, you know, once you have housing, you can find stability in other areas of your life, no matter how that housing may look. And I think There is a spectrum, right? We talk about assisted living as a form of housing for older adults. We can talk about homeownership or rental housing. It's all providing a roof over someone's head. And I do believe every single person deserves a place to call home so that they can find stability and dignity in their life. Isn't that such a rewarding job? Even though there are layers of the compliance and there's layers of all of the unknowns in this property management world, but what a rewarding priority for you personally and professionally. Have you always wanted to be in this field or did this sort of evolve for you as a career path? It evolved. Um, This was not something, if you would have asked me, you know, 15 years ago, would I be here? I probably wouldn't have said that. I ended up here by luck. I was raised by a mom whose profession was in the nonprofit world. So I always had this kind of fundamental belief of giving back to to people in any way that I could. But my career, I went to business school at UCLA Anderson and came out and worked at Citigroup for nine and a half or 10 years. And then it was, I was in a management associate program, a rotational program. And my first rotation was in city community capital both on the debt and equity side, um, working in affordable housing. So that was my first exposure. And then I ended up doing various things um, at City in financial services, including working in a real estate development department. And after nine and a half years, I met my husband and we decided to move out of New York. And he was from Maine and I, I was looking for a new job up here to make a change. And I wanted to find a way to use my skills and give back, give back to society and help people. And this opportunity came up. So I just took a leap and joined Avesta and it led me to where I am today in affordable housing. You've been named a Mainer of the Year. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, by Maine Magazine, a woman to watch in 2021, by the Maine Biz Magazine. So it seems like Maine has definitely embraced you and your leadership and professional journey here with Avesta is being recognized. I mentioned a few of these accolades because I just, it's so obvious you're getting things done up in that region. How is the leadership momentum going for you and and what has that transition been like? It's going really well, Katie. I, um, I'm i truly honored. I have to say when I received the award, that was very surprising. I'm not originally from Maine. 
Um, my husband grew up here, but I didn't grow up here, but I very much consider myself a Mainer now. Um, and you, you'll find when you're up here, there's very few people, they don't consider you a Mainer unless you were born and raised here, <laughs> but I embrace it. And being able to be a leader in the community and make such a great impact to move Maine forward into its future is truly an honor for me. I've received a lot of support from partners, our internal team, from friends, and it's just, I've built a community and a network here that I think is incredibly powerful. And I also think there's a lot of opportunity for Maine to grow and evolve in the next five to 10 years. Um, we're growing. Housing is top of mind as it is across the nation. And it feels good to be able to be a part of that and to be able to make a difference. Let's talk about some of those opportunities. Give us a glimpse of what the affordable housing platform and landscape looks like in Maine. And then let's segue in to see what is being done by your organization and really your community. The housing landscape in Maine has, I think, like very much like other parts of the country is at unprecedented levels. So the demand for housing is much higher than it has ever been in the past. And to give you a sense of that, every year we measure the number of applications that we um, receive in the fiscal year from January 1st to December 31st. In 2020, we received around 4,700 applications. It has more than doubled since then. So last year in 2022, we received close to 9,000 applications. That was 12 times the available openings that we had in that same year. And that's just, it continues to grow at that rate. And it truly is, the pandemic truly exacerbated the situation. Additionally, you know, we have several people moving from other parts of the nation into Maine because of the remote work environment. And it's just, grow, it's a growing housing price, crisis in terms of the affordability of housing here and the inventory in, in places where it's starting to flatten out. It's still completely a high here in Maine. And you guys are also doing real estate development. So how in the world do you try to manage some of these expectations for availability? I mean, what what's your growth plan? You can't, as they say, build your way out of it and 12 times the available openings I mean, that is that is unprecedented, like you mentioned. So what what are you guys using as opportunities to at least try to stem some of that and address some of that? I truly believe going forward, you know, we have to be creative in the way that we build housing. We real estate development is one of the core pillars of our mission, creating new homes. And we're a leader in the industry in northern New England. We have in the last five years, we've doubled our real estate development pipeline, and we currently have about 800 units in the pipeline across Maine and New Hampshire, rural areas, urban areas. And we continue to grow that pipeline. And uh, fundamentally, we need more housing. We're also doing more to support our residents. And that doesn't address the fact that, you know, we do have 9,000 people who are coming to us each year. It's, it's hard to be able to say we don't have housing for you right now, or it may be two years before something opens up. But when they do get in housing, we're doing everything we can to help them stabilize in that housing. And it's something that we call housing plus. It's the wraparound services, it's resident service coordination, it's the connection to the things that people need in daily lives so that it's not just about moving in, it's about moving in and staying there and finding stability once you move into one of our apartment homes. Are there some rewarding projects that you'd like to highlight? Something that has just really made you smile? Well, I have to say, Katie, every single one of our projects <laughs> makes me smile just because they're, they tend to be uh, significant efforts. You know, it can take three to five years sometimes from finding the land to actually opening the doors and having people move in. And every single one that I've worked on that holds a special place in my heart. 
there's a couple that I would highlight. One is we just completed a development in South Portland called West End. It's the second phase, West End Apartments. It is 52 units of housing for individual and families. This development is particularly special because we worked with the state of Maine to provide homes for those seeking asylum. And we moved people in, we brought wraparound services, so we partnered with several organizations to bring in English as a second language classes, uh, legal assistance, connection to the school system, career training and counseling, financial counseling, to help asylum seekers find stable housing, start working, and become a part of our community. So that was that was absolutely, it was a huge effort, not just from our organization, our staff, um, but to see the partnership with City of South Portland, the state of Maine, and our peer organizations was truly magnificent. The second project that I would highlight that I've been a part of, I, I wasn't over the real estate development team when we built it, but it finished when I was overseeing the real estate development team was Houston Commons, and that's a housing first development. And housing first is low barrier housing uh, that provides 24 seven services for those who have experienced chronic homelessness. And to see people who have lived on the streets for years and years and years, move in somewhere, have permanent housing and full-time support, it reminds me why I wake up every day and come to work. Those two develop, there's many, all of them hold a special place and I have stories for all of them, but those two particularly, you know, the, the impact is front and center. You mentioned that you and your team have doubled the pipeline and you guys are projected to add 800 units. Is that correct? That's correct. So what would be your next five-year growth plan? Give us an idea of what you guys are targeting and prioritizing over the next five years. Fundamentally, we want to continue to grow our pipeline. We're always at the mercy of the state and federal programs that are out there. And so in Maine, we, we rely heavily on additional subsidies outside of low-income housing tax credits. And if those subsidies aren't available, then it's not usually feasible to make a development work. And so right now, although we're lining up developments, we're advocating for more funding that would provide the subsidies needed to make the developments work. Because we're not building 300 unit developments here that you would see you know, in some bigger cities. Our, the average size of our development is 30 units or 40 units. And so you have a lot, sometimes you have nine layers in the capital stack much of which is subsidy and grants that you have to that you need in order to make it work so our goal long term is to continue to grow i would love to double the pipeline again in another five years if not faster you know the only constraint around this is the available resources to do so what have you seen are some of the most useful resources for you guys is it some of the tax credit, uh, you know, what are some of your financing tools that you are really seeing are easy to navigate if if that's even easy to navigate in air quotes, I guess I would say. Yes. Easy to navigate is all relative, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, yes, we use low-income housing tax credits, of course, outside of low-income housing tax credits. Um, the state housing authority provides a fairly significant level of subsidy, which is home fund, federal home funds, which we use in many of our developments. The other major source that we often use our developments is the Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston Affordable Housing Program. That tends to be a fairly lucrative subsidy that can close a fairly large gap in a development for us. The other pretty powerful financing resource we have, depending on what municipality we're in, is tax increment financing. Because the rents are fairly low across Maine, except for areas like Portland, Maine, our ability to take on debt just doesn't exist. And so when you can get tax increment financing, financing it allows us to generate more leverage to make it work. That's great. Thanks for that. 
Well, hang on, Rebecca, we have more to get to, but we have to stop here. Coming up in the second part of my talk with changemaker Rebecca Hatfield, the president and CEO of Avesta Housing. Rebecca shares how she approaches the leadership of her organization. I want to support you so that together we can support all of our 5,000 residents. If I can help you show up every day and feel good about being here and feel stability in your life, then you're going to show up energized, right? And I think that's a really, really important message, especially for mission-based organizations. Thanks for listening to Changemakers with Katie Gore. To find out more about Katie, go to quadel.com. That's Q-U-A-D-E-L.com. This has been a production of Forbes Books Radio.